Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about practical uses of gamma and how I can use them for actual trading. Up until this point, I've primarily discussed what gamma means and how it impacts price. However, in this video, I want to talk about how I use it every day to help with my trading, what I'm looking at, and how beneficial it can be. Before we get started, I'll leave several discount codes for trading services I use in the description, including Tradeedix, Voland, and Elite Trader Fund. Lastly, if you enjoy this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. Also, be sure to hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. That being said, let's get right into it. So, first I want to talk about the evening data post. Now, if you have Voland or Tradeedix, you can see this data as well, or really any service that shows Gamma. Uh, so, in this case, every evening, in this case, I ended up actually doing this Friday morning, but I try to do it every evening. Uh, sometimes life gets a little crazy, but where I post the Gamma and Vanna and Charm outlook of SPX and SPY, and it really does help identify if the market's going to keep running or drop. And actually, I was able to call this whole market drop this week uh, before the market even opened all the way back on Sunday, which I was pretty proud about. And on top of that, I was able to nail the ranges pretty good. So if we look at this post, I had actually mentioned that uh, 394, uh, so how Gex falls off at 394, and the reason for that, if we look back at, at the screenshot, is because we could see we have all this negative Gex. Now, if you've looked at my other Gamma videos, you know that negative Gex means dealers are assisting moves through it. And that's in relation to the Gamma curve, right? So we've talked about that too, where as price approaches a, a particular Gamma strike, dealers uh, their hedging increases as we get closer to that strike it peaks as we pass over top of the strike and then starts to diminish as we get to the other side of it so what happens is when we see all this negative gamma here so let's say right here this is 402 that's what i was talking about how it drops off here so there would be minimal movement and as we're dropping 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 and we keep on going we could see right here 395 is a big negative gamma strike and then right after that, it just falls off. So we know as we get down into this area in relation to that gamma curve, that dealers are going to stop assisting movement. That does not mean movement altogether will stop, right? There can be some other reason, could be institutional selling, it could be some sort of catalyst, whatever it might be, where we still get through this, maybe a little bit slower than we had on the prior gamma, and then we can pick back up right around uh, 392, stall again at 391, and then we would have positive gamma here, which is the opposite. So instead of all the, the price movement within this range being assisted, positive gamma would then actually be going against that move. So if we were dropping into it, dealers would be buying, and that would actually create more of a stall than just dealer, dealers doing nothing here. So this would have been the absolute bottom of the day, which I had mentioned, but this was my first point, this 394 point where I, I figured we would bottom for the day. So let's take a look at SPY. Now, what I like to do is I like to mark my the negative gamma levels in red and the positive gamma levels in green. You can see there was no real positive gamma levels until we get, excuse me, so that was the 392 strike. Uh, and then we can see here, so I have all this red negative gamma and then I make them thicker based on the strength of the gamma, right? And that's just something you have to look at by looking at how the, rel the bar is relative to the prior bars, how you want to mark that. You don't have to do this this way. It's just how I prefer to do it. And then I actually do, do, do draw white lines where gamma falls off. So we could see gamma fell off at 394. And then again, at 397.50 was another area. Now what's interesting about that, and let me just go to this chart so we can see it clearer here if I hover over it. So normally we just have even strikes, but we do have those 50 cent strikes that come into play from time to time. And we could see here 397.50, 398, both areas where gamma just falls off, right? So I wanted to mark that specifically. And that's what I did. So we could see no gex here, no gex down at 394. And then I have all my negative gamma scattered about. So we know that deal that price is going to be assisted by dealers as it flows through these negative gamma levels. And that does mean both up and down, right? And then when the gamma falls off, that's where I would be expecting a bottom. Now, there are other correlations I use, such as DXY and VIX with VANA, which I'll, I'll talk about in another video, and pr primarily the, the VIX with VANA. Uh, so if we just drop to the lower time frame here, we had this big sell-off from PCE data that hit in the morning. We retraced. We couldn't get back up. And then at that point, we started dropping again, and we tried to retrace again. We couldn't fill this this. This is on the three minute, so it looks even different actually on lower time frames, which 
we can just drop to, but we could see we fill back up to here and then we start, we start dropping again. And then as soon as we get to that area where dealers are no longer participating. So we have to remember they were participating pretty heavily at 395 light participation around lighter participation around 396, 397. However, as soon as we get to that area where dealers just stop participating, we all of a sudden see this consolidation. And that's an indication that, that, I mean, it's, again, it's still possible we drop. There are other reasons dealers aren't everything. However, uh, when we start seeing this, we know that that price has slowed down, that we've probably formed a bottom. And we can especially feel good about that based on the data that we're looking at. So going back to that chart, we try to break lower. We sweep those lows. And then all of a sudden, we get this big displacement up. Come back again, try to sweep them. And then at that point, we start stair stepping up we bounce off this area here and then we move higher. This would have been, in, in, in my opinion, this is the, the one of the safest, best entries you can take. And this is another setup I really like that I'll talk about in another video. But anyway, we proceed to move higher. And then at that point, uh, we, we kind of come back and forth. Now, this is all fluid movement, right? So as we go through these levels, we're not expecting any hard stops because these are negative gamma levels. So dealers are just assisting it both up and down on these levels. And then we go all the way up and we get past 397. But again, right around 397.50, based on, on dealer assistance, so we have some light negative gamma here and then negative gamma just falls off here. We don't have dealers assisting us anymore. And we do one of these situations where we, we reverse, come down, come back up, fail to make a new high. We actually hold on this, this previous up candle and then we reject pretty hard, which is another good short entry. And you can have confidence in that, especially when you pair it with the data. Now, I was blinded to this move right here because I was looking at some other data that sort of uh, messed with me a bit. But regardless, I was still able to catch a nice up move and had extra confidence from the fact that gamma had fallen off here, negative gamma had fallen off. And so that's, and I've been doing this every single day. And, and, and this week in particular, this, it was the same thing uh, that with the Wednesday night post going into Thursday, talking about uh, showing the charts where gamma falls off and it was gamma fell off right above 402 and gamma at, on this day fell off right below, uh, or excuse me, right at 396. So again, when we talk about that gamma curve where dealers stop participating as we get further and further from the strike, the participation falls off more and more. And so when we get to strikes where there are no, there is no gamma, even though there might be light participation from dealers, it just means there's not going to be that extra assist, uh, assistance and there will be great reversal points. And that was what was crazy. I actually had done a post on Thursday as we were falling around 11 o'clock where I said, hey, gamma is falling off around 396. I mentioned how gamma had fallen off at 402. So that was the top and that it fell off again at 396. So expect a bottom around there. And we got all the way down to the low of this candle, which was 396.26. And then we did a, a very nice reversal pattern and moved all the way almost back to open, not quite. And so that's how I've been applying it. Now that is with negative gamma. And as I mentioned, uh, so, so having no gamma in a particular area is one thing, right? And that's very useful for identifying the range that we'd be trading in. Now, having positive gamma, I, I feel is even more powerful, right? Because instead of just no participation, now we dealers are participating, but they're going against that move. So let's say hypothetically going into next week. Now, I haven't looked at the data, so I, I don't know this for sure, but I'll do Twitter posts about it when I do. I haven't looked at all the data, I should say. So let's say we do get past this 392.50 level where we see gamma fall off, right? So this this structure has changed a bit. We actually see more participation now at 394 and 393 than we did before. We get to 392.50 and we, we start falling below right here at 390. This is actually very surprising, but participation is almost minimal at 390 uh, when we're looking at net, net gamma, right? That's what we're looking at here. Then 389 is where we get positive gamma. So that means going into Monday, should we continue dropping? I'm going to be looking at 390 and 389 as a potential bottom and feeling especially good as we near that 389 strike and dealers start buying against the move that's coming down. Now, if we were to move higher, gamma falls off around 397.50, 398. So that would be the potential top, assuming that we open within this range down here. And so uh, the other thing that I want to mention is when we're looking at 
So we that's the negative how I play negative gamma and positive gamma to identify tops and bottoms and, and which range we're going to trade in. Now, when when we talk about Vanna, Vanna, uh, we want to look at the cumulative impact. And again, I've broken down Vanna on a strike per strike basis, and that's almost a bit of a disservice. And I plan on covering it more. But when we look at the cumulative impact of Vanna, and what I mean by that is, you can see here below price we have all this positive Vanna, and above price we have uh, pretty flat to well, excuse me, negative flat, and then eventually we start getting into positive Vanna. But this is at well outside of the Vanna curve range. I mean, it can still have an impact, but we tend to favor areas where there's more positive Vanna as the magnet zones. And on top of that, as we get into these areas where we have more and more positive Vanna, that like, so negative gamma causes volatility to increase, right? Because we have dealer assisted moves through it. And it's the same deal with positive Vanna. So what I mean by that is if price is dropping, typically we see IV rising. If IV is rising, that means we're going to get pulled towards the positive Vanna that's below spot. And I know that might take a minute to digest and I have made videos about it and I promise I will get into this a bit more because it is a confusing topic. But that means if IV is rising and dealers are selling to magnet us towards this these positive Vanna strikes that we have below spot, that is also increasing volatility. So when we get into these areas where we're filled with negative gamma, and, and positive Vanna, that combo, that's where we can expect these big, large percentage moves, right? So this, this is a heavily volatile day where we had large swings back and forth. And so if we just look at the price range, so from the high of day to the low of day, we can, we're talking uh, right here almost, so yeah, we're drop, topping, uh, talking about almost a six point drop on SPY, which is pretty significant, right? So this is, one, almost one and a half percent and that's in one day and then what makes this exceptionally volatile isn't that that we just dropped that much but then we came back up the, almost the same amount and that's what we're talking about with uh with positive vanity because what happens is when price starts moving back up and iv starts dropping positive vanity causes buying so not only do we have buying as we pass through these negative gex strikes but we have buying as iv is dropping so that's why we get these these big fair value gaps, these these buy side imbalances essentially where going back up and same thing coming down is because of that dealer assistance coming through these ranges. So I'll stop the video here. I hope you found that helpful. I will do a follow up video on uh, how I use Vanna for practical trading uh, as well. And then uh, talk about some other some other nuances of Vanna that I think people will find useful. But if you found this helpful, uh, then great. Feel free to ask any questions and I will try to get to them as quickly as I can and I appreciate you watching.